Hey everyone, in this is we're gonna talk about the RAN GTPAs cycle. So to begin, what is the RAN GTPAs cycle involved in? Well, it's actually involved in nuclear transport. So typically proteins such as transcription factors are transported into the nucleus from the cytosol through nuclear pore complexes. And these nuclear pore complexes are composed of around 30 different types of proteins we call nucleoporins. Now I mentioned the nuclear membrane, uh, we also call this a nuclear envelope and it is actually a double membrane. So there's actually a double membrane that separates the components of the nucleus from the cytosol. So proteins can transport from the cytosol into the nucleus in a couple of different ways. And one way is passive diffusion, uh, where they can passively diffuse through nuclear pores. And usually proteins of around 60 kilodaltons or less can pass through these nuclear pores through passive diffusion. Now there's been some research showing that it is possible that maybe a little bit bigger proteins can pass through passive diffusion, but typically proteins are bigger than 60 kilodaltons, they have to pass through active transport. So proteins going into the nucleus from the cytosol would go into the nucleus with the help of proteins known as importins. And importance bind to their target protein through a nuclear localization signal, which is on the target protein. And proteins coming out of the nucleus back into the cytosol are actually brought out by the help of proteins known as exportins. And exportins bind to their target protein through a nuclear export signal, which is located on the target protein. And all of these signals, the nuclear localization signal and the nuclear export signal are simply a sequence of amino acids on the target protein. So important in this RAN GTPA cycle is this idea of a RAN gradient. Now RAN is simply a protein and it can come in a couple of different forms. One is RAN GDP, which is primarily found in the cytosol. And there is RAN GTP, which is primarily found in the nucleus. And we'll talk about why that is in the next slide. But recognize that in total, when we look at all the RAN protein in the cell, about only 5% is located in the cytosol, while the rest of the 95% is located in the nucleus. So here's our nucleus. So we mentioned that proteins entering into the nucleus from the cytosol enter the nucleus through nuclear pore complexes or MPCs. Now again, the nuclear membrane is a double membrane. So a lot of proteins like transcription factors, which are large, have to get into the nucleus through these nuclear pore complexes. And we also mentioned that proteins less than 60 kilodaltons can usually enter the nucleus through nuclear pores by passive diffusion. But if the protein is larger um, than 60 kilodaltons, it requires some help um, in the form of active transport with the help of proteins known as importins. And they bind to the protein, it could be a transcription factor, and they bind to these proteins through the amino acid sequence on the protein known as the no nuclear localization signal. And we mentioned that RAN GDP is in the cytosol, GDP standing for guanosine diphosphate. So RAN GDP has two phosphate groups. Now, both of these proteins, RAN GDP and important alpha or beta with its protein cargo, enter into the nucleus through nuclear pore complexes. Once in the nucleus, RAN GDP gets acted on by the protein known as RCC1. And RCC1 is located in the nucleus primarily and it associates with chromatin and what it does is it actually takes an inorganic phosphate and adds it to the RAN GDP to form RAN GTP which has three phosphate groups now. Once we have RAN GTP we mentioned that most of the RAN GTP is located in the nucleus and what it does is it actually binds to important proteins. And remember that important is bound to its cargo protein, it's bound to its target protein. But when RAN GTP binds to important protein, it actually disrupts the important's ability to bind to its target protein, effectively kicking its cargo off of the important protein. Now we have a dimer of RAN GTP and important protein bound together. Now RAN GTP can then exit with important 
out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore complex and back into the cytosol. Once the RAND, GTP, and important are in the cytosol, what happens is that RAND, GTP gets acted on by a couple of different proteins. Um, one is known as RAND, GAP, or RAND, GTPase activating protein, and the other one is RAND binding proteins. And these two uh, types of proteins actually increase the GTPase activity of RAN. And what that means is that it actually removes one of the phos uh, phosphate groups off of RAN GTP to reform RAN GDP. Once RAN GTP has been hydrolyzed to RAN GDP, it disrupts RAN GTP's ability to bind to important, and important is effectively kicked off of RAN GTP. So that was nuclear import, but what about nuclear export? Well, nuclear export is pretty much identical to what we uh, saw in the last slide, it, except for the fact that we use export in proteins, and they themselves bind to protein cargo within the nucleus through um, something else called a nuclear export signal. And the export in proteins with their cargo bind to RAN GTP, and this whole complex of proteins, um, RAN GTP, exportin, and exportin's cargo, all exit the nucleus through a nuclear pore complex into the cytosol. Now, again, we've seen that RAN GTP gets acted on by RAN GAP and RAN BP to increase its RAN GTPase activity to hydrolyze RAN GTP to RAN GDP. And when RAN GTP gets hydrolyzed to RAN GDP, it again disrupts the binding of exportin to RAN GTP, effectively kicking off exportin from RAN GTP. And on top of that, the protein cargo gets kicked off of exportin. So they all get disrupted from the hydrolyzation of RAN GTP. Then, as we've learned before, RAN GDP and exportin proteins can enter the nucleus through nuclear pore complexes and the cycle can continue. RAN GDP can be recycled back into RAN GTP in the nucleus um, via RCC1 and the exportin protein can be used again to bind to protein cargo in the nucleus um, which has nuclear export signals. Anyways guys, that was a lesson on the RAN GTPA cycle and nuclear transport involving importance and exportance. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.